Okay, so we're going to watch uh, this video, 24 minutes, though. So you know how I like to ramble, so we're going to watch it on a little bit of fast settings. I know it's going to sound weird. Shapiro already talks so fast. You know, if you slow Shapiro down, he sounds normal. Made a video discussing why I would be voting for President Trump. But now <laughs> you I hear it? Discuss why no one should vote for Joe Biden. He sounds normal. Oh, man. Before we begin, I just need to give a quick shout out to our friends over at Raycon who sponsored this video. I don't give a shit about every major policy issue on which his. Okay, let's. Uh, friends over at Raycon yeah, yeah, yeah. Who sponsored this video. This is this, Stick around you like this? For a special offer from our friends at Raycon. There are essentially four reasons why you should not vote for Joe Biden. First, okay. He's a typical Washington, D.C. politician with all of the corruption that entails. Second, Okay, so, I mean, we're probably not going to get too much into this whole thing. Uh, but to that first point, like, yeah, that's true. I would just say that, like, you think that Trump's not corrupt. I mean, like, in the ways that Biden is corrupt, like, you know, allowing, let's say, Hunter getting Hunter Biden a job in, in, you know, for that Ukraine bank or whatever. That's nepotism and utilizing his power to do that. Uh, but then, like, on the off shot, you have Donald Trump trying to withhold funding from the Ukraine to get them to investigate Joe Biden. They're both corrupt dicks. So, like, that's a that's kind of a, a, a moot point, so to speak. He has been wrong on every major foreign policy issue, like ever his entire life. Third. Is that true? I don't know if much, uh, too much about foreign policy, but I don't know if that's necessarily true. I'd like to see the substance, the substance for that. He's no bulwark of moderation. He has shifted left on every major policy issue on which he has ever spoken. And finally. Well, yeah, but like moderation generally shifts left, right? So like moving forward, we need to move forward properly and practically. And most people in the United States want to move forward. Even most Republicans are somewhat Libby a little bit. Like I'd say majority of Republicans, I think there was like a, a Fox News did like a study that said like 75% of people were fine with some kind of like public health corruption as long as they maintain their private health care. His actual agenda, the one he has stated, is wildly and radically to the left. Okay, so let's start it's with not. Joe Biden. Biden was born in 1942, a long time ago, in Scranton, Pennsylvania. His family moved to Delaware okay. when he was nine. He was a self-described poor student in high school. He was popular. He was elected student. You like how he said self-described poor this way? Like, he doesn't have to admit that he may have come from, like, a little bit of a shaky background. I believe when he was in high school. He went to University of Delaware. Because was- if he said he was poor, then it makes Joe Biden look good because he, like, rose above it. He was ranked 506th in a class of 688. He went to Syracuse College of Law. He ranked 76th out of a class of 85, which just shows you that our, pol- our political class, they're not always bringing the intellectual best. He received- I mean, like George Bush is like a like C's. Like, who cares? Like, and like, it's so funny. His point was like, Joe Biden's not that smart, and it's like, okay, but like, isn't the whole concern? And this is something I very much agree with. I'm tired of polit- like intellectual elites who don't have any actual like life experience trying to run society. It's very much a conservative talking point, uh, and I don't understand how you would reject that the second that it becomes convenient for you. He did draft deferments for Vietnam while he was in school. He won his first Senate race in 1972 when he was. Tw- what? Didn't Trump uh, dodge a traffic too? 29 years old. That was the same year that his wife and daughter Naomi were killed in an automobile accident, which of course is a massive tragedy. Jesus. His sons were in the car and they were injured as well. Biden subsequently married Jill in 1977. He became ranking member of the Senate Judiciary Committee in 1981 and ran for president in 1987. But he flamed out amidst accusations of exaggeration and plagiarism. So what was Joe Biden like when he okay. was in Congress? Well, he was ambitious. Right? He was the father of so-called borking. He was the guy in charge of the Senate Judiciary Committee when they decided to basically make it impossible for anybody to openly state that they were in favor of the Constitution as written and interpreting it as written as a judge. What Joe Biden mean? brags about that now. He says he was happy that he kept Robert Bork off the court. If you like all of the insanity surrounding our judicial nominations, you can blame Joe Biden. He started it. I was part of the reason why Elena Kagan to work for me be got on the Supreme Court. I was part of the reason why Ruth Bader Ginsburg is on the court. I was part. I mean, RBG like is like renowned as like a bipartisan judge. I'm so confused about his point here. Part of the reason why Sotomayor is on the court. We got to slow it down because fucking Ben Shapiro is on like double time with this fucking. And she swore me in. I presided and I'm the reason why this right wasn't taken away a long time ago because I almost single handedly made sure that Robert Bork did not get on the court because he did not think there should be enumerated rights. Okay, that that was one of the most egregious. Just think there should be what? Get on the court because he did not think there should be enumerated rights. What? Let's look into it. Uh, It says that he was uh, opposed. The opposition to his nomination centered on his stated desire to roll back the civil rights decisions of the Warren and Burger courts. I I don't know exactly this, but I feel like anybody who wants to roll back civil rights decisions is not somebody who should be on the Supreme Court. Um, so I think that maybe that's a rough take from you there, Ben. It sounds racist. 
It sounds like you're upset that a racist didn't get nominated who, again, apparently wanted to roll back civil rights decisions. He had stated his desire to roll back. So I don't know. That sounds kind of rough to me. I'm just I'm just saying, my man. Okay, that that was one of the most egregious acts in the history of judicial nominations. And Biden brags about it. He tried the same thing against Clarence Thomas. He tried to railroad Thomas on Anita Hill's unsupported charges of sexual harassment. Thomas suggested sure. that essentially Biden was throwing bean balls at him. Wasn't that guy a Democrat, though? Uh, that Biden was being unfair to him, which, of course, was true. Later, Biden would apologize to Anita Hill for not being harsher on Clarence Thomas. And, of course, Joe Biden has a very long habit of putting his foot in his mouth. I know that now. All right. So I don't know that situation or how much how credible the accusations are. But to like give Joe Biden shit for trying to be in defense of somebody who may have been sexually assaulted and knows that there's no pipeline, especially back then, for them to get justice. uh, It's a tough thing. Supposed to believe he's a golden tongued orator. But until five minutes ago, everybody understood that Joe Biden was a walking joke. Here is just a few of Joe Biden's favorite gaffes. We got the first. I mean, not for nothing, but uh, if you think Joe Biden's a walking joke, oh, so is Trump, at least on the same level. Like, we just talked about how I love Trump because he's a fucking living meme. Sort of mainstream African American yeah. who is articulate and bright and, and, and clean and a nice looking guy. You cannot go to a 7 Eleven or a Dunkin' Donuts unless you have a slight Indian accent. As far as the idea- so like let's just establish like what Biden said was like racist back in the day. This seems this is from two thousand and eight. Uh, this is from or no, it's not from two thousand and eight. It's probably from before. I don't know. Either way, this is from at least like ten plus years ago. Racism was more alive. It was more socially acceptable. Um, and and like it's not excusable. But again, we talked about how you know Republicans cry about cancel culture, and it seems very clear that Joe Biden has changed to some degree. But also, you just gave Joe Biden shit for not electing a judge that openly wanted to roll back civil civil rights, and now you're going to call him a racist. So even if he said some bad stuff, he still didn't want an actively racist Supreme Court judge. How do you how do you make that argument? Eleven. Did I say racism ex- acceptable? Did you mean acceptable or ex- expectable? I'm v- okay, yeah. No, no, no. What I'm saying is that back then, racism was more accepted. Like, honestly, that's what I was trying to say. Unless you have a slight Indian accent. As far as the idea that Joe Biden is uh, just a nice guy, aside from borking bork and going after Clarence Thomas, you'll remember that Joe Biden also said that Mitt Romney was going to re-enslave black people. So that was exciting stuff. He's going to let the big banks once again write their own rules. Unchain! Wall Street. Wait, these are all good talking points for Biden. Uh, They're going to put you all back in chains. Wait, that's a good talking. This makes Biden look so good. He's uh, I think he's talking about like the rolling back, like how I think Romney wanted to roll back bank regulations, one of which would be regulations that allow banks to deny black people. It makes him look good. I, I don't know how it doesn't make him look good. I'm just saying. OK, so that kind of sums up his political career up till this point. It doesn't what really make done. him look like he that was bad. senator for a really long time. Then he was Barack Obama's vice president. He ran for president, as I said. Obama was decent. In 1987-1988. He was basically thrown out of the campaign when it was discovered that he was a plagiarist. He was a serial plagiarist, actually. He plagiarized not just from Neil Kinnock, who's a British politician, about his personal life story. He also plagiarized from RFK, and that brought up other plagiarism issues and exaggeration issues. He suggested he'd been a civil rights marcher. None of that was true. All of well, that is- He sounds like a dickhead. That sounds pretty bad. Um, compared to Trump's past, again, of, you know, uh, supporting the, uh, the, the the jailing of the Central Park Five, despite the fact that they shouldn't have been jailed. And there are some mentions about, like, denying opportunities to, like, black people, probably because, not because they're black, but because they're poor. Like, the point is, is everybody has a shitty past. So, like, it's like, when we, we've, I don't think anyone has ever taken the perspective that Biden's, like, amazing. Uh, but within context, Biden seems better, and most of the things you're hitting him with are politics. not then that you get bad. To Joe Biden's corruption. So when we talk about usual politics yeah. of corruption, yeah. Joe Biden's there, right? He is a Washington, D.C. Sure. swamp creature. And this has been known for a long time. There's yeah, nothing yeah. new here. Okay? okay, Joe Biden, I know now everybody is talking about Joe Biden and Hunter. This has been a kind of skeleton in Joe Biden's closet nearly his entire political sure. career. Members of his family using his name in order to make bank. For sure. Nepotism 101 is a corrupt, absolute argument there. For sure. So going back to 2000. But like, it's nepotism and like we all benefit from it. And like, 
do we not like doesn't didn't Trump like make Ivanka Trump his like daughter something in the white like what isn't Ivanka Trump some kind of a speaker or something like you know what I'm saying? 2008 mainstream media outlets. Let's see what what, what is what is Ivanka Trump? What is Trump? What's what's uh oh what's her White House salary? I don't know. What does she do? Oh, get Jared Kushner too. Right? What is what is Ivanka? Wait, not Ivanka. What's his daughter's name? I'm so oh yeah, it is Ivanka. Job. What's her job? I can't even spell job. Uh, she's in the White House. She's some fucking. Uh, she does something. You get my point. I'm I'm dumb. I'm fucking stupid. The point is, is that nepotism is alive and well for both of them. Joe Biden's family corruption. She's an CBS advisor News to the president. Quote, a son of Democratic vice presidential candidate Joe Biden was paid an undisclosed amount of money as a consultant by MBNA, the largest employer in Delaware. During the years, the senator supported legislation that was promoted by the credit card industry sounds and pretty opposed corrupt. by consumer groups. Consum it sounds pretty corrupt. It sounds kind of on the level of corruption of trying to write off like your daughter's shit on your taxes. It was so fucking weird. You have to look for the tax. And my point, you get my civil point. Rights groups it's unions ridiculous. as well as Democratic opponents had argued that the bankruptcy legislation they both was unfair suck. to low-income working people, single moms, minorities, and the elderly. And would remove a safety net for those who have lost their jobs or face mounting medical. What I find so weird is that, like, that seems pretty bad. That's basically some form of systemic racism or whatever. If you want to make call it that, that's fine. Um, and that's definitely employee. corrupt. But, like, he just gave him shit for countering Romney for wanting to remove bank regulations because those regulations help, like, black people. And so it's like, where, what side, like, what are you in support of? Are you in support of, like, of regulation or not i'm so confused or more than 200 like you're giving him shit for deregulating first you give him shit for trying to maintain regulations then you're giving him shit for deregulating where is your argument Senate campaigns over the past two decades making donors working for the credit card company the senator's largest source of hey, scumbag. Campaign money sounds and like of course it. biden was receiving sweetheart real estate deals from mbna himself michelle malkin reporting for national Probably. Radio in 2010 wrote former senior senator from delaware and current vice president joe biden has a custom built house in Delaware's ritziest Chateau country neighborhood. Damn. It is now worth at least 2.5 million bucks. It is the Biden's most valuable asset. Biden tapped campaign funds to pay for his compound's lawn needs. He secured the new estate with the help of a corporate executive who worked up. for Biden's top campaign donor, Sounds credit card bad. giant MBNA. In 1996, Biden sold his previous mansion to MBNA Vice Chairman John Cochran. The asking price was 1.2 million. Cochran forked over the full sum. Biden then paid 350 grand in cash to real estate developer Keith Stoltz for a 4.2 acre lakefront lot. Stoltz had paid that same amount five years earlier for the undeveloped property. Joe Biden's family spent okay. decades cashing in on his name. According to the left-wing site The Intercept, in 2006, Bo Biden, who yeah. died of cancer in 2015, was roped into an investment meeting led by James and Hunter Biden at the firm Paradigm Global Advisors. The mm. family was considering acquiring the firm. James Biden told executives he'd have no problem bringing in people looking for an in with Joe Biden, who was a U.S. senator at the time. James Biden told officials, according to a Politico magazine investigation, quote, we've got people all over the world who want to invest in Joe Biden. James, also in the 90s, founded a group called Lion Hall, which lobbied for Mississippi trial lawyers involved in tobacco litigation, according to Curtis Wilkie's book, The Fall of the House. So it sounds like she's complaining that Biden has leverage to his name. Is that the argument? Like, I mean, like, that's what happens when you get any form of power, no? And now he's complaining about lobbyists? Is that what you're... You get my point? Like, it just seems like if it was anyone else, he wouldn't give a shit. But because he's Joe Biden, we got to care right now. House of Zeus, the trial lawyers wanted James Biden's help pushing Joe Biden on tobacco legislation. And of course, then there's Hunter, who's run around picking up bags of yeah, cash yeah, from everybody yeah, from yeah, MBNA yeah, yeah, yeah. to Burisma. In fact, here's Hunter Biden admitting the only reason he was even on the Burisma board is because his last name is Biden. Right. If your last name wasn't Biden, do you think he would have been asked to be on the board of Burisma? I don't know. I don't know. Probably not. I, I don't think that there's a lot of things that would have happened in my life that uh, that if my last name wasn't Biden. So suppose that's um, that is how the life works. It's called nepotism. Um, and you could rope this into accumulation of wealth. Uh, this is just how life works, man. Like if you think that nepotism should be illegal, then fuck most people who have decent jobs because that's kind of how it works. I'm just telling you. Supposedly, Joe Biden knew nothing about any of this, right? Hunter was just picking up rides on Air Force Two to China and then picking up million dollar deals over there. And Hunter Biden was traveling over to Kazakhstan and to Ukraine and just picking up these bags of cash everywhere. But Joe Biden knew nothing about any of these deals. Well, now Tony Bobolinsky, who was Hunter Biden's business partner in a failed Tony venture, says, no, Joe was pretty well aware of this stuff. That's a blatant lie. When he says that, that is a blatant yeah. lie. 
Obviously, the world's aware that I attended the uh, debate last Thursday, and uh, in that debate, he made a specific statement. It sounds pretty around scummy. Questions Baba around this from the president, and uh, I'll be honest with you, I uh, almost stood up and screamed liar and walked out because I was Should shocked. Done it. So, bottom line here is that Joe Biden's a swamp creature. Right? He's well, yeah, it sounds like Joe Biden is engaged in nepotism, but I have a correct question: Is what he did illegal? And um, it's probably not illegal. It's probably just again nepotism. Uh, and then, like, we could, like, you parallel that to, like, let's say Trump not paying his taxes. Did, was his tax avoidance illegal? No. He just knows how to play the tax code. So, like, now we're getting to a, com a conversation of, like, what is, what's wrong legally and what can we change rather than what did Joe Biden do that was, like, illegal? Does that make sense? I know I'm, like, making a weird point. You get my point? He's a typical Washington, D.C. swamp creature. He is embedded in low level to high level sure. corruption. He's been willing to greenlight his family's corruption for a long time. And the way to change that is by starting to remove money out of politics, which I guarantee you Shapiro wouldn't be for. Then we get to Joe Biden on policy. So, a few things to know about Joe Biden on policy. Yes. First reason not to vote for Biden, typical DC politician swamp creature. Right. Reason number two not to vote for Joe Biden. He's been wrong on every foreign policy issue of his entire lifetime. I'm Maybe. not the one saying that. Obama Defense Secretary Robert Gates said that just a few years back. Again, that was Obama's Defense Secretary who served with Joe Biden saying that. You said in your memoir, Joe Biden is impossible not to like. Quote, he's a man of integrity, incapable of hiding what he really thinks, and one of those rare people you know you can turn to for help in a personal crisis. Okay. Still, I think he's been wrong on nearly every major foreign policy and national security issue over the past four decades. Would he be an effective commander-in-chief? I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I think... I stand by that statement. So let's go. Okay, that's fair. That's an interpretation. I don't know the specifics of Let me speak a little slower. What am I, Ben Shapiro? I don't know the specifics of his foreign policy, so I'm not going to sit here and weigh in either way. But that's like the opinion of an individual. Um, and like it seems like it's open for some form of interpretation, you know? Go through this. Okay, so in Iraq, Joe Biden supported the war in Iraq, right? He did. He spoke out favorably for it. He said it was really, really important. He talked about supporting President. Yeah, it was a terrible idea that was pushed by like a Republican. <laughs> Right. And it was almost unanimous that everybody supported it uh, because we we're kind of like, you know, that was like if you didn't, it was considered like social suicide. It wasn't wrong. One hundred percent. But like everybody did. President Bush. Then he says that Colin Powell made a compelling case for the war in Iraq. That was in 2003. Yeah. Yeah. When they like used false evidence to try to force the war. 2005. Sure. Biden was saying the Iraq war was a mistake. Right? It was a big mistake by 2005. Because yeah, because it was a big mistake in the first place because we uh, we went in there on false pretenses and we destabilized every, you know the entire country. Because, of course, Joe Biden shifts with the wind. Right? Well, no, that's pretty standard. 2019, Biden was openly lying about this stuff, saying that he started opposing the war the moment shock and awe started, which, of course, is not true. He continued to support the war after that. And okay. here's Joe Biden in 2019 just lying about his opposition to the Iraq war. I did make a bad judgment trusting the president saying he was only doing this to get inspectors in and get the U.N. to agree to put inspectors in. From the moment shock and awe started, from that moment, I was opposed to the effort and I was outspoken. I mean, listen, you're going to lie when you're talking. I mean, Trump lied all the time, too. Biden lied. You know, the reality is, it's like it's an upper interpretation what the word sh term shock and awe means and at what point that was. But I, I mean, Nick, sure, he's probably lying. As much as anyone at all in the Congress and administration. Overt lie. Not true. OK, then by 2006, Biden These are kind of shallow. He said the Iraq surge was a really, really bad idea. By the way, that's the only thing that made Iraq anything close to uh, a, a success. Then by 2010, Biden was in favor of precipitously pulling troops out of Iraq. He said it would be a great Obama achievement. Of course, we all remember, if we have memories long enough, that the pullout from Iraq ended with the rise of ISIS. So it's actually one of the worst things the Obama administration did. Here was Joe Biden in 2010 praising it. I'm pretty sure. Very optimistic about. Uh, uh, I'm pretty sure everybody wanted people to get out of the war. Uh, about Iraq. I think it's going to be one of the great achievements of this administration. You're going to see 90,000 American troops come marching home by the uh, end of the summer. You're going to see a stable government in Iraq. What was the favorability of him pulling out of the war when it came to like like a bipartisan effort? The. <sighs> Uh, I'm trying to see what like the because like the problem is is like we need to look back at like the general consensus there and like without um 
like what was this something that was heavily like that Republicans were for against what was the status quo what was everything contextually like it did lead to very poor it is actually um, even poor it did, did lead to destabilization for okay, sure all of that is just him being wrong from every conceivable angle on rock like every angle then there's Afghanistan so in 2009 Biden opposed Obama's Afghanistan surge he was the only person in the cabinet to do so apparently then in 2011, Biden acknowledged that he had opposed the raid that ended with the killing of Osama bin Laden, which is nearly impossible to do. Like, that's the easiest call in the history of foreign policy. And Biden blew that one. <laughs> Biden admitted he blew it. I said, we owe the man a direct answer. Mr. President, my suggestion is don't go. We have to do two more things to see if he's there. OK, let's move to Libya. So Biden in 2011. There is apparently some case where, like, they tried to get Osama bin Laden at a certain time to make it look better. So the NATO got it right in Libya. In fact, Libya was a great success story as opposed to George W. Bush in Iraq. Forget about the fact that Libya immediately collapsed into utter chaos, ending with the burning of the U.S. Embassy in Benghazi and the murder of four Americans, including Ambassador Chris Stevens. Also, wrong on Russia. In 2012, Biden openly mocks the idea of Russia as an adversary because Mitt Romney had said that Russia was a geopolitical threat to the United States. Biden said, no, no none of that. They're, they're our friends. It does sound like Biden's pretty terrible on foreign policy, honestly. Guys, they are our friends. <laughs> so now, that's of pretty course, bad. Russia is the oh, bad bogeyman uh, in the closet. But at the time, Biden was handing over control of Syria to Russia. He was handing over control of Crimea to Russia. He and Obama were pledging flexibility to Russia. So he's been wrong on that. He was wrong on Iran in 2015. Joe Biden praised the Iran deal, said the Iran deal was a well, was going to create well, peace in the Middle East. Well, okay, so the Iran deal was actually decent. And I'm going to go into the Iran. I always say this every time we fucking talk about the Iran deal. The Iran deal wasn't perfect. We did give them back the money that we had held withheld from them like during like, some sanctions. But they stopped producing nuclear weapons, and there was zero evidence to, to suggest that they actually abandoned the deal. Trump pulled out with the claim that they had abandoned the deal, which they never had. Every single one of our allies in the area had said that it was an emphatic lie. And then moving on, um, Iran maintained the agreement for a pretty long period of time after Trump abandoned the agreement, and they were hoping that he would reconstitute the agreement. Now. Look at it from this way. We have Iran. We had to give. We had to concede to them to some extent. It's called a compromise. It's not great to get them to stop creating nuclear weapons. They stopped. Now, like parallel that with Trump giving North Korea a ton of fucking relief from sanctions and them still continuing to create uh, missiles to try to attack us. And it's like, how can you praise Trump for trying to work with North Korea? And then shit on Obama for trying to work with Iran when Trump failed and Obama succeeded. Do you understand what I'm saying? I have come to the conclusion that in the context I've just cited, that this is a good deal. This is a good deal for the first and foremost for the United States. It's a good deal for the world, the region, and it's a good deal for Israel and uh, the uh, Gulf cooperation states. It's a good deal. Turns out the Iran deal was a giant mess. All it did was fund a terrorist regime that was using that money in order to kill American soldiers abroad and foster its terrorism all over the Middle East. By that might way, be true, but again, they gave that money back to them. The fostering of that terrorism ended, ironically, with Middle East peace between many... The radical left, Pelosi, AOC, de Blasio... <laughs> the radical left. <laughs> are, we are we surprised that's the... Uh... Israel ...who had to oppose Iran. Then in 2020, Biden came out and ripped Donald Trump for killing Qasem Soleimani, who's the head of the terror network in Iran. So, okay... I think he said Soleimani. He's talking so fast because he's on fast forward. Um, but what I would say, okay, so to the Soleimani thing, well, I'm going to put this in context for you guys. The killing of Soleimani was pretty unanimously considered a dumb idea because of the perceived backlash that we were going to get. Somehow, though, we got no backlash. So it was actually a fucking hit. So good for Trump for making that call uh, and taking a big risk, but there was virtually no backlash. So it was good, but like it's understandable why people would speak out against it. He said, yeah, Soleimani was a bad guy, but this is for sure going to create retaliation. It yeah, us most to people thought war. that. None of that was true, right? He literally said mm. that this will have the opposite effect of deterring future attacks from Iran. That was the general consensus, though. So you can't really give Biden shit for a speculation that had like a solid amount of weight to it said he tossed a stick of dynamite into a tinderbox. That was Biden's phraseology. Dead wrong on that. Okay, on China. Yeah, he Biden happened to be said in 2019 that. that China is not competition for the United States, well, which fun. is weird because um, they are. China is going to eat our lunch? Come on, man. They can't even figure out how to deal with the, 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 the fact that they have this great division between the China Sea and the mountains in the east, I mean, in the west. They can't figure out how they're going to deal with this the corruption that exists within the system. I mean, I, you know, they're not bad folks, folks, but guess what? 
They're not a they're, they're not, not, not competition for us. Hey, well, Israel, it's not Biden has always taken I mean, like we have 25 percent of the world economy. They have 15 percent of the world economy. We have an average GDP growth of one one and a half percent during Obama's period, but two and a half percent under Trump, excluding the coronavirus. Uh, you know. China has been maintained a solid like six plus percent GDP growth. Their threat, like financially, and they're still considered considered like a developing country. So they're going to continue to be that threat. Being harsh with Israel and its negotiations with Palestinian terror groups is a good idea. And now in 2020, after it is perfectly obvious and clear that the move of the U.S. embassy to Jerusalem was a good move and had no downsides, Joe Biden still says he wouldn't have moved the U.S. embassy to Jerusalem. Maybe I have no fucking idea about that about is like Israel and Palestine or anything. I got to educate myself on it. <laughs> This is an administration that, as you know, uh, advocated uh, moving uh, the capital of Israel to you Jerusalem. Subscribe to if you are elected president, would you reverse that? Not now. I wouldn't reverse it. I wouldn't have done it in the first place. So bottom line is this. Robert Gates right. is right. Biden's been wrong. I, just wonder, I would wonder why. I imagine he would have right. went into that if you let him keep speaking. And more on the reasons why you should not vote for Joe Biden in just a second. But first, I have to tell you about something fabulous. Totally. So, that sounds awesome. Loved our love. Duh, awesome. Playtime That's crazy. They are great. That's Properly awesome, bro. Suck and sick. Woo, sick. Nice. So two weeks ago, I made a video. God damn it! I hit the wrong button. President Trump. Raycons are great. Bring in the description. Whoa! He's constantly evolving. Okay, then we get to his domestic policy. There so there is one constant theme to Joe Biden's domestic policy. He's constantly evolving, which is to say, there's nothing wrong evolving. He abandons every position as soon as it becomes mm. politically unpalatable. So look at his history on crime and drugs. In 1982, Biden explicitly told Ronald Reagan to ramp up drug enforcement. Yes. In fact, he said Ronald Reagan wasn't doing enough on drug enforcement. Yes. Then in 1989. He suggested we needed more drug enforcement. We yes. need longer sentences for criminals. We need to lock up drug dealers. Here's yes. Joe Biden saying that. I think the president has to join us in making a significantly greater commitment to these six areas to stem the rising tide of violence nice. in America. And that's what it is, violence. Great. First, we have to join together to ensure that drug dealers are punished swiftly, surely, and severely. In the line with what the president is calling for, we have to hold every drug user accountable. It's so funny that like conservatives totally agree with this perspective, but they're still giving them shit for it. Because if there were no, uh, no drug users, there would be no appetite for drugs and there'd be no market for them. In 1993, Joe Biden became one of the chief sponsors. Like, ask Ben Shapiro, do you disagree with what he said? And then he would say either yes or no. He'd say, like, he will actually is honest. He says, no, I agree. Then you're being dis dishonest about supporting or not supporting him for that. And then let's say you disagree. It's like, well, why? And then you'd be like, well, uh, it led to the mass incarceration of uh, black and Hispanic people. It's like, oh, is that systemic racism? No, that doesn't exist. You see, like, where we get into the trap? of the 1994 Congressional Crime Bill, which lengthened sentences, created mandatory minimums, and all that. It was actually a good bill. But don't worry, you'll see. As times shift, so does Joe Biden. Wait, so now, so his perspective is it was a good bill, but now Biden's shifting. What? Okay, what? <laughs> In 2010, Biden stood with the criminalization of marijuana. In 2016, Biden basically, when it comes to this point, we're saying that like back in the day, Biden was ev like everyone else who thought that these would be positive impacts. And then now, since where we got... Uh, where we have come based on those crime bills where like, you know, it disproportionately incarcerated black and Hispanic people and made crime worse in those areas. Now we're like, oh shit, bad idea. That's not a flip-flop. That's learning. That's just growing with the curve, man. He was still defending the 1994 crime bill. But by 2019, 2020, things had changed, right? The nature of the Democratic Party had changed. And now Joe Biden was apologizing for the crime bill. In 2019, he said, I'm, I'm sorry about that. It was just a big mistake, yeah. said Joe Biden. He said, I haven't always been right. I know we haven't always gotten things right, but I've always tried. It was a big imagine, mistake when it was made. Oh, weird. Imagine was, getting shit for being apologetic for fucking up. That was the signal achievement of your congressional career. He also flipped on marijuana. He had said that marijuana was bad. Now marijuana ought to be decriminalized. And he flipped on the death penalty yeah, as well. Should be so virtually every criminal justice stand he's ever held, he has flipped on. The same thing is true on abortion. In 1973-74, Biden supported getting rid of Roe versus Wade. He said that the decision went too far. Uh, okay, so... But like we're going to read into this. So he said that the decision went too far. That doesn't mean that he was pro-life. It just means that he thought Roe v. Wade was too drastic. A lot of people, Republicans aren't actually as against abortion as people think. They just want stricter regulation. And like you may have to overturn Roe v. Wade to do that. But like stricter regulation, mostly maintaining the first trimester. Most people are actually rather comfortable with first trimester abortions. Um so for him to say, hey, I think that abortion goes too far and to be a little more progressive on it now, I don't know that that's that's not like a flop. That's just a slight shift. He said in 1974, quote, he didn't think a woman has the sole right to say what should happen to her body. OK, as late as 2019, Biden was still defending the Hyde Amendment. Right? He was saying that abortion should not be federally funded in the United States. Then it became mm -hmm. politically unpalatable to say that. And so he flipped and denounced the Hyde Amendment. I can't justify leaving millions of women without access to the care they need and the ability to, con to exercise their constitutionally Let's look at what the Hyde Amendment is. 
so we can all be ed educated. Did I spell that wrong? Um, <sighs> okay, so the Hyde Amendment, uh, which blocks federal funds from being used to pay for abortion outside of the uh, the exceptions of rape, incest, and or if the pregnancy is determined to endanger the woman's life. Um, like I, I probably maybe would support that, but then again, so this is basically within the context that like federal fun federal funding is like Medicare or Medicaid or whatever, you know what I'm talking about. Um, and they wouldn't be able to have abortions covered. That's an iffy topic. That's something I would have a conversation about. The thing is, is that like when it comes down to it, like if you look at this from a very like pragmatic perspective, uh, like abort, allowing poor because poor people would be the ones that would you know, have access to this. Allowing poor people to have better access to abortion means less overall government funding going to those people. Because if they're going to have a kid, they're going to either be on some they're going to be on some form of welfare program. So like this is a very this is a very complex conversation to have. So yeah, I guess I would be against uh, this uh, this this thing. Protect it right. If I believe healthcare is a right as I do, I can no longer support an amendment that makes that right dependent on someone's zip code. By 2020, he moved all the way from Roe versus Wade is a bad decision to we need to codify Roe in federal law because his party is now the party of unrestricted abortion on every level. Oh, Considering the true. new Supreme Court nomination of Amy... Uh you really can't substantiate unrestricted abortion claims because there's no claim of such. Um, yeah, there's just not. I think the most liberal uh, abortion law is that you can have a, you can abort up to 24 weeks which is, I think, too much, but, uh, and then, like, you can abort up to, like, I guess, birth, um, if there is, like, some harm to the mother's life. Um, Tony Barrett, what are your particular plans to protect women's reproductive so rights in the U.S.? Old. Number one, we don't know exactly what she will do, although the expectation is that she may oh. very well move to overview, overview, overrule Roe. I doubt she and, would. But the only thing, the only responsible response to that would be to pass legislation making Roe the law of the land. That's what I would do. On immigration, Joe Biden has shifted. In 2006, Joe Biden suggested not only building 700 miles of fence, he also suggested that we ought to prosecute companies for hiring illegal immigrants. I voted for a fence. I voted, like, unlike most Democrats, and some of you won't like it. I voted for 700 miles of fence. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you, we can build a fence 40 stories high. Unless you change the dynamic in Mexico. And, and, you will not like this, and punish American employers who knowingly violate the law when, in fact, That's they fair. hire illegals. Now, of course, Joe Biden says he will make DACA permanent on the very first day he is in office. Okay, on gay marriage. Wait, that's it? So he had this idea that we should punish people for hiring illegal immigrants. And now because he supports DACA, that means that he no longer holds to that value. That seems like a bizarre accusation. Uh, accusation. I mean, listen, DACA was a weird thing. I don't know. People may or may not agree with it. I'm not fully educated on what it is. But like we made the promise under the Obama administration and like a presidential promise should be maintained. Uh, and that's simply the reason why I support DACA. Whether it's a good or a bad decision is irrelevant to me because we created that standard and we should maintain that. Like if the president makes a promise, we should try to hold to that promise. Do you understand what I'm saying? It evolved. Okay, but he didn't really evolve. Okay, let's just be frank about this. Everything in Joe Biden's career is he follows the prevailing winds in his party, which makes a big difference because remember, his pitch is that he's a bulwark against the radicals. It's a it's a fine line to walk when when I fucking speaking like an idiot. It's a fine line to shift your perspective due to new education and it just to be labeled somebody who flip flops based on like the status quo. No, he absolutely is not. On gay marriage in ninety three, he voted for a bill deeming homosexuality incompatible with military service. Don't ask, don't tell though. In ninety ah, see, this is where the context gets very poor. So, don't ask, don't tell for its time was actually considered like positive, right? On gay marriage in 93, he voted for a bill deeming homosexuality incompatible with military service. The Don't Ask, Don't Tell bill in 93. The Don't Ask, Don't Tell bill was actually rather progressive for its time. I know it was only, it was a very short while ago. But basically, you were just not allowed to be gay in the military. Then we went from you can be not be gay at all to like you can be gay, just don't tell anybody. And then ultimately, we protected rights for gay people in the military, which is a good thing. My point is, is that was a progressive step. So you're intentionally taking it out of context. 96, Biden voted for the Defense of Marriage Act, protecting traditional marriage. By 2012, he had shifted. Now he was pushing same-sex marriage as a trial balloon on behalf of the Obama administration. So 
Obama and uh, Biden were against uh, same same sex marriage, specifically being labeled marriage. I believe they wanted to maintain it like as some kind of a union that had the same protections, just to reserve the what uh, the, the word marriage. Now, me personally, I think that same sex marriage should be legal because you decided to get the government involved when it came to your like religion, right? You're like, hey, we should get government benefits for being married. It's like, well, once you put the government involved, everybody gets it. You don't get to maintain it as like if you were just going to maintain it as like some Catholic standard. I don't give a shit. Is your belief set? Once you make a government a law, it's now something that everybody should have access to. You're comfortable with same-sex marriage now? I, I look. I am vice president of the United States of America. Um, the president sets the policy. It's so crazy how we, much we've shifted so fast when it comes to shit like this. Like you guys, really? Some of you guys really don't understand how fast we shifted. Um, in the past, like ten years. I am absolutely comfortable with the fact that. Men marrying men, women marrying women, and heterosexual men and women marrying women are entitled to the same exact rights, all the civil rights, all the civil liberties. And quite frankly, I don't see much of a distinction uh, beyond that. That was not a matter of principle for Joe Biden. It was a matter of, as always, political expedience. On literally every topic, Joe Biden is willing to shift his stance. Every single one. In 96, he voted for welfare reform. By 2020, his campaign would not answer where he even was on welfare reform. Oh, okay, so bottom line is that if you're trusting Joe Biden. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, Jesus Christ. It's so crazy, man. Work against the radical left. <laughs> You're stupid. That is an idiotic idea. He is not a bulwark against the radical left. So to recap, he's a typical. I, I, I would say that he kind of is a, a bulwark against the radical left, if that's what you want to call it. Like, yeah, leftists have been taken over the Democratic Party to an extent, like very, very far leftist. Uh, but like, let's look at it. So let's look at what the leftists want to do or like the leftists what like the very far left like you get what i'm fucking saying what the policy is let's say from like aoc medicare for all uh immediate extinction of private insurance full public insurance run by the government joe biden wants to create a public option that still maintains private insurance that's a rather that's a decent shift uh the green new deal i, I don't even know the outrageous amount of numbers but basically it was like trillions of dollars um, like uh, upwards of a hundred. I might be so off on that. I don't even care to look into it. You get my point. It was incredibly radical so that we'd hit net zero carbon emissions by 2030. Joe Biden's position is let's go for 2050, a much more reasonable and practical perspective. So like, if you look at the differences, like it's really not that he's, yeah, he's reining it in. He's responding to what most people want. Most people want healthcare reform. Most people want climate change reform. So, like, to give him so much shit for listening to the people seems really weird. Typical Washington, D.C. corrupt insider, too. He's been wrong on every foreign policy issue he has ever touched. Right, Three, just he's involved on every position toward the radical left when the incentives were aligned. And finally, four, Joe Biden's already making clear that the agenda is aligning on behalf of the radical left. Not only has he suggested that America is systemically racist, his actual plans are as... Yeah, America has systemic racism. Uh, let's let's let me slow it down. God damn it. And stop making Bernie points. Sanders of the radical left. Not only has he suggested that America is systemically racist... You know what's crazy? Joe Biden. I mean, not Joe Biden. Uh, this guy, Ben Shapiro, very intelligent guy, got swept by Joe Rogan. Not a dumb guy, but like not a formally intelligent guy when it came to systemic racism. It's like a proof that common sense outdoes, like, you know, uh, just like intellectual, formal intellectual elitism. Like, this is what Ben Shapiro is. And it's like, how are you still maintaining that systemic racism doesn't exist? His actual plans are, as Bernie Sanders says, to the left of Franklin Roosevelt. Of FDR. Of L well, that's a long time ago, doggy. LBJ. It is the most progressive platform in American history, according to Bernie Sanders. Biden's tax plan, according to the Tax Foundation's general equilibrium model, will reduce GDP by one point. Well, when you say it like that, you're trying to make it seem like it's more progressive than like the current narrative, but it's not. It is progressive, but it's not like as progressive as Sanders. 0.62% over the long term. That Biden tax plan by 2030 would lead to about 7.7% less after-tax income for the top 1% and about a 1.9% decline in after-tax income for all taxpayers on average, a Hoover Institute analysis says. Who cares? Like, so you're saying that, like, by 2030, I'll be making, oh, on average, like, 2% less per check to maintain climate and to what Wall Street is saying spur a job growth greater than Trump? Okay. That's an average. When you said the top 1% is at 8%, I imagine that 1.9% is lower. Like, this idea that, like, taxes, like, okay, I'll take the cut as a middle-class American to have a better, cleaner earth. I don't know what the shame tactic is here. That that tax plan is going to cost the median family about 6,500 bucks by 2030. His spending- The median family. 
is like everybody together. Is extraordinary. According to Henry Olson, writing for the Washington Post, the Manhattan Institute's Brian Rydell, a former budget staffer, used third party cost estimates of Biden's proposal to show they total more than $11 trillion over 10 years. $11 trillion. By the way, the optimistic assessment of how much money the government will take in, in addition to what they're currently taking in because the tax increases is just $3.3 trillion. So that is an overrun of $8 trillion. Biden is going to target your religious liberty. He is. His own website says, quote, Religious freedom is a fun. I mean, that might be true. I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, it's a third party user. I'm not entirely sure how confirmed that is. Um, but hey, who knows? Maybe it's true. It's just it's hard to substantiate that because you know he's going to cherry pick his evidence. Fundamental American value. But, uh, but states have appropriately. But states have inappropriately used broad exemptions to allow businesses, medical providers, social service agencies, state and local government officials and others to discriminate against LGBTQ people. Can we just can we just talk about how. Can we? So to Ben Shapiro, I just want you guys to understand this. He's saying that your religious liberties and freedoms will be uh, culled. They will be removed because Joe Biden doesn't want you to discriminate against gay and trans people. Um, there's no way to kind of there's kind of no way to look at this as not homophobic. I'm just letting you guys know that whether you agree with him or not is you, you, it's not a good take <laughs> like how is this your this is your in defense of trump this is like a, your anti-biden shit this is this might actually be a pro-biden ad businesses medical providers social i'm i'm convinced that Joe Biden paid Ben Shapiro to make this video. Service agencies, state and local government officials, and others to discriminate against LGBTQ people. So what you're going to get is your... Shouldn't private entities be allowed to discriminate, though? And I don't really think so. In what capacity? Like, should you be allowed to not hire a gay person? No, you shouldn't. Because you exist in our society with our laws and our general funding. If you want to exist in a society that created the roadways and infrastructure for you to be able to even get your business to be run, then you need to hire gay people. I don't know what you want me to tell you, my man. Church being cracked down upon. Your business being cracked down upon. Religious liberty is on the ballot. Biden's on the wrong uh, side. On gun. Biden has actually been pretty consistently anti-gun, despite all of his talk about owning shotguns and then saying blatantly ridiculous things about guns, such as blow a shotgun, blast through your door, or fire a shotgun from your balcony, or cops should shoot to wound. What the hell Biden you... openly says he'll put... Wait, what's wrong with the narrative of cops should shoot to, to wound? That sounds like a decent narrative, no? Beto O'Rourke, like gun confiscation, Beto O'Rourke in charge of guns. I want to make something clear. I'm going to guarantee you this is not the last year seeing this guy. You're going to take care of the gun problem with me. You're going to be the one that leads this effort. I'm counting on you. I'm counting on you. Let's just look at that really quick if he's going to lead it. Gun policy. Let's see. Let's see what we got here. What's what? What do we? Wait, is there something longer? Jesus Christ. I mean, he's talking about Beto O'Rourke um, taking away guns. We want to talk. We were going to want to talk about this, uh, you know, because I mean, I'm I'm a supporter of guns and gun rights and gun usage and whatnot. So we we want to see like what he's specifically talking about. I mean, obviously he's probably pandering because Beto O'Rourke is effectively dead in the water, and he was probably just trying to take votes. But it's still something that we should look into. So let's take a look at it really quick. And I'm just rambling while this ad fucking runs, so we could skip it. Hell yes, we're going to take your AR-15, your AK-47. We're not going to allow it to be used against our fellow Americans anymore. You said, quote, Americans who own AR-15s and AK-47s will have to sell them to the government, all of them. You know the critics call this confiscation. Are you proposing taking away their guns, and how would this work? I am. If it's a weapon that was designed to kill people on a battlefield. Yeah, I don't think that there's much context that needs to be provided here. If... The high Damn. Impact, high velocity round when it hits your body shreds. It, uh, there's no reason to even continue to watch that. It's crazy how like that's pretty that's pretty lefty, man. I don't know for that. Uh but my understanding is that Joe Biden's policy is like uh is um what the fuck's the word? Uh whatever. Like yeah, fucking you can decide if you want to engage in the buyback program. Like it's it's a volunteer buyback program. Still, that's some bullshit lefty nonsense. So. Labor. Biden intends on giving away the store to organized labor, particularly public sector unions. He opposes right to work legislation. Wait, what? On labor. Biden intends on giving away the store to organized labor, particularly public sector unions. What's wrong with unions? He opposes right to work legislation that allows you not to sign over union wages if you're not a member of a union. 
That's weird. I guess I gave you that Many one. states. He's in favor of card check, which allows union heads to bully you into voting in favor of a union. No blind balloting for unions. He wants to raise the minimum wage. He wants to make collective bargaining with public... Yeah, I don't believe in minimum wage increases. UBI. Public sector unions mandatory, so states don't get to decide whether to bargain with a public sector union. I get why you'd want to... See, that's the thing. You want to agree with some kind of like a full unionization so that workers would stop getting taken advantage of. But it seems like that type of law might have a negative impact. On schooling. Biden wants to hand billions and billions and billions of more dollars to teachers unions. He opposes federal funding for charter schools. He opposes school vouchers on immigration. <laughs> school vouchers are stupid. <laughs> Focusing on that school vouchers, like, right, that's the idea of going whatever school you want. It's dumb, dumb idea. It's impractical. It's stupid. And if you disagree with me, go watch my video where I debunk uh, Ben Shapiro debunking systemic racism because it's just an impractical idea that will never work. Biden is now pushing hard for amnesty for 11 million illegal immigrants. He said this in the last debate. I've made it very clear within 100 days, I'm going to send to the United States Congress a pathway to citizenship for over 11 million undocumented people. And all of was that from DACA? Those so-called dreamers, those DACA yeah, kids, yeah, they're is. going to be immediately certified again to be able to stay in this country and put on a path to citizenship. So there you are, the four reasons not to vote for I already made that point. Typical before. politician, complete with all the corruption. Two, Joe Biden's been wrong on every single foreign policy. Blah, 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 blah. Three, you cannot trust him to be a bulwark for moderation. He's not even a bulwark in defense of his own moderation from the past. He will immediately <sighs> jump out of that if the political winds shift against him. And four, his open agenda is incredibly radical. And you may not like President Trump. You may not want to vote for President Trump. You may not vote for President Trump. But please think about whether or not you should vote for Joe Biden, because a vote against President Trump and in favor of Joe Biden is still a vote in favor of Joe Biden. Well, thanks so much for watching. If you want to see more content, I don't. I actually do. I subscribe. Uh, this was a rough take for Shapiro. This is actually kind of put Joe Biden in like more of a positive light, and it made my uh, it made my friend here look a little bit a little homophobic, a little poopy. Ben, what are you doing, my friend? I want to say thank you so much, guys, to all my Patreons, and a special shout out to my Papa XL Patreons. Without all of you guys, I would just be some fat dude screaming into a microphone. So thank you so much, guys. Mwah. I love you all. I want Papa Gut to pee on my face But just as a friend There's nothing weird about that I want him to pee on my face